Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to everybody who was able to come out here live today and attend. Welcome to our social media members, our Facebook folks who are probably watching live stream today. And welcome to the YouTube subscribers who may be looking at this later on. Did you get yours? What is COVID protection? The blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm, praise the Lord. Well, I'm going to tell you what I think COVID protection is in this sermon. We all know that the end is near. And that Satan has launched a full attack on everyone. He wants to make you doubt. He wants to make you fearful. He wants you to believe in man and not God. He is leading many people down this wide path of destruction. And we're being played. You ever heard of the term monkey see, monkey do? How about this? When I was a kid, I said to my mom, I want to go do thus and such because everybody else is doing it. And she would say, well, if everybody else jumps off a cliff, are you going to jump off a cliff? You ever heard that one? Oh, yeah. You know? Everybody else is going to jump off a cliff. You're going to do that? I don't think so. So how do we really know the truth? Well, the truth is in the Bible. I am sure that some people out there listening to this sermon today, I'm not sure who I'm preaching to today, may have a problem with what I'm going to be preaching about. But I do pray that they are at least sparked a little bit and possibly maybe change their heart and their mind and lean on the Lord. Amen. COVID is on the minds of everybody. And that makes the devil very, very happy. He wants you to just focus on that. Forget about everything else. He wants you to forget about God. Worry about the COVID. That's making him happy. My intent is not to discourage you from making your own choice as to whether or not you should get the COVID vaccine or not. My intent is to share what the Bible says about viruses and encourage you to listen to the Lord. Put your faith in what the Word says and ask Him to protect you. Now, please note that I do observe the rules. I constantly wash my hands. I use alcohol after going into a store or restaurant. I you know, try and purify. I wear that mask in a store, public places, where they tell me to, but I'm not going to wear it outside by myself when I need to breathe in that fresh oxygen, I'll have a respect for others. I will have it on when I'm within six feet. But I, I rely on God. Now, here's a very well-known quote from a pastor in Singapore. And this is Joseph Prince. Be wise and take necessary precautions. Prince said, but at the same time, pray the prayer of protection found in Psalms 19 daily. I encourage all believers to speak the promises of God's protection over yourself, your entire household, and the church. Joseph Prince said, rather than live in fear, actively receive his love and protection personally. I'm going to ask Pastor Linda to read Psalms 91 for us. That's a short area. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Mm -hmm. You shall not be afraid by the terror by night, mm -hmm. nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, mm -hmm. nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and mm -hmm. ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Mm -hmm. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Mm -hmm. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague 
come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. And I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Is that beautiful? Yes, it is. So, if you read Psalms 91 daily, and let that resonate, I think you will be led in a different direction and forget about the fears that you have. So be proactive in prayer and be intentional in prayer against COVID. Mm -hmm. You know, I hear so many people asking, did you get your shot? Are you planning to get your shot? All of that nonsense? Well, actually, it's a very private thing in my opinion. It should not be discussed. Privacy, HIPAA laws. When you go to the doctor's office, you have to take all this time to fill out the privacy paperwork on HIPAA. Sometimes it takes longer to fill that paperwork out than it does actually see the darn doctor. <laughs> so don't feel pressure that you've got to share with everybody and you've got to ask everybody because it's your own private thing. It's between you and what God's telling you to do. End of story. Mm -hmm. Now before I go on, I'm going to look at a couple of definitions. Virus. You'll all look it up in the dictionary. Virus. It's the causative agent of an infectious disease. It's any, any of a large group of sub-microscopic infectious agents that are regarded either as extremely simple microorganisms or as extremely complex molecules that typically contain a protein coat surrounding an RNA or DNA core of generic material, but no semi-permeable membrane that are capable of growth and multiplication in only living cells, and that cause various important diseases in humans. Now, that was a mouthful. That was certainly a mouthful. Okay? Yeah. But bottom line, it's something that really needs a human to live in and to grow and to multiply. Mm -hmm. Now, it's also the definition, a simple definition, a disease or illness caused by a virus. A virus is also something that can poison your mind and soul. You have something poison your mind and soul, mentally thinking about it. Now, in the Bible, the word pestilence is used. And it's mentioned well over 30 times in the Bible. So I said, well, what does pestilence really mean? Well, pestilence is a contagious or infectious epidemic disease that is of devastating effect. The bubonic plague was a good example. It's something that is destructive. And a pestilence and a virus are really one and the same. And the Bible talks about it all over. Linda read Psalms 91 a little earlier, but in Psalms 91 and verse 6 specifically, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the calamity that destroys at noon, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Don't worry about it. Don't think about it. Think about God. Corona has the United States and the Western world on edge. As reports continue to emerge daily about new cases of the infection, and people are Googling for COVID-19, they're looking for symptoms, and looking at maps and locations of recent breakouts. They're possessed with it. They're searching for tips on how to avoid getting 
the, the, on how to avoid getting the infection and signs on how the virus may be related. Here's the second. They're looking at signs on how this virus may be related to Scripture and Bible prophecy. There are a few people out there that do believe that this is a part of Bible prophecy. They think it could be a part of the end times. Others are really looking for reminders about trusting God amidst the times of uncertainty that we have. As the COVID-19 pandemic is certainly such a time. So today, as a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, and through the help of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to share a couple of points that God wants you to know about virus attacks. Number one. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Fear not is the most quoted words of Jesus. You read the Bible, you hear, fear not, for I am with you. Fear not. We are protected. Most quoted words. Then Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 10, it says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed. Dis dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Another thing that God wants us to know about it is refresh yourself with His love. If you're watching the news, you're forgetting about God, you're forgetting about His love for you. He says, refresh yourself with His love. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 it says, For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. In Romans chapter 8 verses 38 to 39 it reads, For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor heights nor depths or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us from that love. God also wants us to know about the virus attacks. Trust in His faithfulness. Trust in Him. Trust in His faithfulness. He also says, be at rest. Be led by the Holy Spirit and not motivated by fear. It seems like everyone today, they are making decisions based out of fear. Psalms 34 and chapter, verse 4 it says, I sought the Lord and He answered me and delivered me from all my fears. It's right there. If you're afraid of something, turn it over to Him because He will deliver you from your fears. The other thing he wants you to know, he says, keep focus on me. Keep focus on Jesus. Talk about Jesus and not about COVID. Can you imagine the kind of world we'd be in today if everybody started talking about Jesus as much as they talk about the COVID? Wow, what a mm. wonderful place this would be. Mm. I think all of this would be behind us. But they don't. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And that includes keeping you safe from sickness and COVID. And the peace of God, which will surpass all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Your mind needs to be protected. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7. Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. People have anxiety over this COVID thing. Oh, geez, I came close to this guy. Oh, I'm so worried I'm going to get this sick and that and the other thing. I don't have my alcohol to wipe my hands right at this very moment. Don't worry about it. He's got you covered. God's got your back. Psalms 55 verse 22. Cast your burdens on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. And the other thing God wants you to know, he says, death has no hold on you. This virus will not reign. It will pass. It will pass. Romans chapter 5, verse 17. For if 
by the trespass of one man. Death reigns through that one man. How much more will those who receive an abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in the life through one man, Jesus Christ? So, spend your time feeding on God's Word and stop watching all the misleading news and all the stuff you're finding on the Internet. Don't pray out of stress, but have a confident expectation of good. I just feel like something good is about to happen. It's a song. A Jimmy Swagger song I hear. I just feel like something good is about to happen. Of course, I can't sing. But the words from the song I often hear. I just feel like something good is about to happen. Well, if you're worried about the COVID and you're not focused on the Lord, how's anything good going to happen? It ain't. It ain't. The Bible offers ample examples of encouragement for those who might be feeling anxious or fearful about the present health crisis. Read your Bible and learn about fear and learn about anxiety and how to help combat those feelings of helplessness and worry amidst this whole COVID pandemic. We are not powerless. We have God on our side. And if God is for us, then who can be against us? Who can be against us? You know, the Bible says a lot about plagues. I would encourage you to go and read what the Bible says about plagues. But it all really started when a in Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And according to Romans chapter 8, verses 20 to 21, it reads, For the creation was subject to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who, is sub who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its own bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. You see, Adam and Eve disobeyed, and that's where it all started. Problems happened. The onset of a plague in the Bible has always been uh, a, a way of destruction of a civilization or a destruction of a life, brought by the hands of the wrath of God in response of their acts of disobedience against him. The leaders of our country are disobedient to God. They want to take God out of our country. They are turning their back on God and they are being led by greed and power. I believe we can conclude that a pestilence is a virus. And as I said before, there are many verses on pestilence, read them up. Check them out. See what they have to say. Find a couple that you can gravitate to. Let God know that you're thinking about Him and you're not thinking about the virus. You know, it's assuring to know that there are verses in the Bible for our guidance and comfort. Trust in the Lord. Our currency is a constant reminder. It's printed on it. In God we trust. It doesn't say, in man and government we trust. Show me where that is. In man and government we trust. It's not there. So let's start acting like we believe it. Act like you believe in God we trust. So why does the government want everyone to get the COVID shot? Well, I have my own thoughts. I believe it's about control, it's about power, and it's about the love of money. Every shot administered, somebody's making some money on this thing. Somebody's making some money. Not, not get one, you gotta get two, then you gotta get a booster. They're making money. As I said earlier in the sermon, we are in the end times, and during the end times there will be the mark of the beast. Draw your own conclusion. I think that perhaps maybe this is the mark of the beast because they're going to say, well, if you didn't get your shots, you can't go here, can't do this, can't do that. I'm not going to listen and rely on man. I'm not going to listen and rely on government to protect me. I'm going to rely solely on the Lord Jesus Christ to provide protection for me. So, if you get the shot, why do you still have to wear a mask? Get the shot, why do you still have to wear a mask? Ten people in a room with the shot, one people walks in without it. 
They're protected. And you're protected from them. Why do you got to wear a mask? It makes no sense to me. But Satan and our government leaders continue to instill fear in your mind. Now, the CDC is saying, well, maybe we'll see a few restrictions lifted in the coming months. Really? Hmm. I remember last year when they said we would be restricted only for a few weeks. Again, I say, trust in the Lord to guide and to protect you. I am not going to worry and fret about the virus. I'm going to rely on the Lord. He is my COVID protection, and I pray that you will make him yours as well. May God bless you and protect you. Amen. Amen.